Hi, I'm Peter Carter. I want to show you this um, excellent, really superb animation of global warming showing a global regional temperature increase. It's a, a revolving Earth animation of global warming projections and it was published by the Washington Post. And it shows um, today 1 degree C, we're just a little bit above 1 degree C today. It's uh, June 2022. There is 1.5 degree C and there is 2 degree C. Here most usefully they have put the global temperature increase in both degrees Fahrenheit and centigrade and uh, from the pre-industrial 1850 to 1900. So this really really provides um, everything that we need. I'm going to point out a few of the countries now for your orientation but as you watch these uh, what you won't fail, can't fail to notice is the huge difference in the temperature increase from today to 1.5 degrees C and the further huge increase in the temperature increase at 2 degrees C. And so, of course, um, uh, these revolving Earths, these revolving globes, will show you which regions warm up the fastest. So, um, I've just uh, labeled some landmark countries for your orientation, put them on the 1 degree C today globe. And right at the top here, we have the Arctic. And the Arctic uh, heating shows up particularly well in this presentation. There is Russia there, there's uh, Europe, uh, Western Europe, United Kingdom, Greece down there, Italy there, Saudi Arabia here, and there, Africa. And I've just pointed out South Africa here. Again, at the top is the Arctic, here's North America, Canada, United States, Mexico, South America, Brazil. Uh, note and take a look, um, notice the sea surface temperature the sea surface temperature increases. Um, Arctic on the top, we have uh, another view of the Arctic. Uh, Siberia here, uh, Eastern Europe, the countries of Eastern Europe there, China, India, Australia, and uh, there we have the Philippines and Indonesia, and uh, Laos and Cambodia, and uh, those countries there, right there. Notice how fast the Arctic and uh, northern Canada is warming up. The Arctic, of course, is heating up faster than anywhere else on the planet, uh, over three times as fast now. The western, the southwestern United States is heating up particularly fast, and so is Brazil. You see the rapid warming in the Arctic again, Arctic amplification, and note the vast Pacific Ocean that you're looking at, and it's warmed up a lot by 2 degrees C. Northeast China region around Beijing heats up fast. At the bottom you see the continent of Australia, all Australia heating up fast.
at the bottom uh, of African continent, southern Africa heats up particularly fast. This really shows that 1.5 degrees C is globally disastrous and 2 degrees C is global catastrophe. Now lastly we are going to the most important place region on the planet with respect to uh, global warming, climate change and our future and that is the Arctic. The Arctic and the Arctic uh, amplifying feedbacks are another definite reason why 1.5 degrees C is globally disastrous and 2 degrees C is catastrophic, catastrophic to the planet. The um, Washington Post model simulations um, showed us the Arctic unusually well for these uh, model representations. So we're looking down at the North Pole there's the Arctic Ocean, there's Greenland, I put Greenland on there and there for your orientation and uh, this is Canada, Canada there, United States, there's Europe, there's Europe and this is Siberia. So all of that is a huge, huge region of Siberia. Now this one is today and this one here is at 1.5 degrees C which we will be at around 2030. So just look at the huge difference in the northern hemisphere temperature increase and the enormous difference between the Arctic heating today and the Arctic heating at 1.5 degrees C in about 10 years. Now going back to um, uh, this view here the brown is permafrost. So all this brown colored region is permafrost and you can see how vast the permafrost region is in northern Canada, Alaska and Siberia. Uh, this is to show the permafrost specifically from uh, this map uh, to s that specifically shows the permafrost regions. There's Greenland and there's Greenland for orientation and this is Canada here, Alaska there, and all of this is Siberia and all the purple that you're seeing is permafrost. I uh, bring your attention to uh, this very very dark heated region here um, which is very interesting because that's the Barents Sea and a paper has just been published that finds that the Barents Sea region of the Arctic is uh, heating up five to seven times the Arctic average and uh, you can see how much heat is uh, in the Arctic here and the Arctic is uh, warming up three times at least the uh, global average temperature increase now. So of course the significance of the permafrost is um, all of the vast amounts of carbon, frozen carbon until recently, um, permafrost. The permafrost in total holds more than double the atmospheric carbon. It's an enormous, enormous amount. So if we look at Canada here, um, all of this region in northern Canada, which is heating up very, very fast, uh, this is permafrost as well as peat-rich wetlands, which they are vast in uh, northern Canada. And uh, their source of feedback emissions methane, carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide and the same applies to Siberia. Uh, permafrost uh, is the permafrost temperature is uh, rising rapidly and that's the permafrost everywhere and the permafrost of course is thawing and uh, it's thawing much faster uh, than anybody anticipated and thawing permafrost is already emitting Again, the three big greenhouse gases, methane, carbon dioxide, and nitrous oxide. And these are feedback emissions, and the longer 
global warming continues, and of course the more the global temperature increases, then the more permafrost will thaw and the more feedback emissions will be released and that will drive up global warming even faster. The reason why the uh, Arctic, and you probably know, the reason why the Arctic is heating up so, so fast is that uh, it's due to the Arctic sea ice. The Arctic sea ice is uh, progressively losing extent. Um, it's uh, shrinking as well as its volume is shrinking. But where it loses its extent, they, that exerts a feedback. So instead of the um, shiny white Arctic uh, sea ice reflecting all the solar energy away, the, where the Arctic Ocean is open in the, in the summer, instead of reflecting solar energy away, solar energy is absorbed by the dark open ocean. It's absorbed as heat. So that's called the uh, Arctic sea ice feedback. And the more Arctic is melted away, then the more feedback there is. And the more the Arctic temperature is increased, and that's called Arctic amplification. Here we are then looking down over the Arctic. And here we are today. That's the Arctic sea ice there. And there's Greenland. And this is 1.5 degrees C warming. You can make out Greenland again there. And this is 2 degrees C. And there again is Greenland for your orientation. So you see this huge difference that I've already pointed out of um, Arctic uh, heating compared to 1 degree C. It's absolutely huge. And there's another huge, huge increase in Arctic heating, Arctic amplified heating at 2 degrees C. There's North America again. See the huge difference between the day and 1.5 C and another huge difference, 2 C. There is Asia. You can just make out Eastern Europe to the far left. And um, all of that super dark region is Siberian permafrost. Enormous. This Arctic view then of amplified Arctic heating at 1.5 degrees C and at 2 degrees C, this is why the Arctic uh, has long been referred to as a carbon bomb. The fuse has been well and truly lit on this carbon bomb by uh, industrial civilizations, global warming greenhouse gas emissions, and those emissions right now are increasing, and they're increasing faster than ever. And this continued can only lead to a planetary catastrophe, an end of the world effect of global warming with the thawing permafrost releasing increasing 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 amounts of all three greenhouse gases not only methane a lot more carbon dioxide than anybody anticipated and also nitrous oxide continuing to emit greenhouse gases then to continue to burn fossil fuels is absolute madness is completely insane the crime of all time and manifestly the greatest evil the greatest evil ever imaginable the continuing emission of fossil fuel and other industrial greenhouse gases is only a road to uh, annihilation the end of us and the end of most life on earth